morning, everybody, and thanks for waking up with the chase. No oh way. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. One of one, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Go to Dave. I must ask you a question right now. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Oh, whoa, we walk. Sit back, relax, and crack a cold one. The chase is live. And what you didn't see is five seconds before we went on, this thing was over here. <laughs> so David luckily told me to swing it real quick. It is a chilly morning here. But we about to warm you up here on the chase. Good morning. Good morning, Trey. Another episode. Another Wednesday, another episode. Oh, I love that. A little hump day. Yeah, a little hump day action, eh? Yep. Getting my voice back finally. Yeah, what happened to you? Uh, I, As I, I type in twitch.tv a, a slash lot of, A lot of screaming at the Bills game on Sunday. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, so. a lot of screaming, quote, unquote. You know what he really means, right? What, what did I mean, Troy? Nothing. Did you have a good Did you have a good birthday though? Yeah, no, it was great. You enjoyed was, the Bills game? Yeah, I did. I mm -hmm. did very much. That's so. all that matters. I'm excited to just continue with the week now. You're you're excited because I tell you right now, guys, we do the show for about an hour of our day. I'll mm -hmm. say, almost an hour and a half. About an hour, yeah. And uh, then we got to go pull orders. We're pulling orders today. We're getting we're getting crushed back there in the best way possible. Yeah, we're, getting, right? we're we're mangled in the back, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, like, since Black Friday, since Cyber Monday, it's been absolutely crazy. Madhouse, but that's a good thing, obviously. Orders after orders after orders. Yeah, so shout out to all the guys in the warehouse that are just working their asses off back there the, uh, and just getting the orders done, getting them shipped out. I, I see what's going on back there. Yeah. We're on the inside, so we can uh, we can see what's going on there. The real MVPs. The real, the unwritten heroes. Uh, what do we got today, though? Got a got a special episode. Oh, we sure do have a special episode, to say the least. <laughs> to say well the said. least. Yeah, you know how we uh, we usually go through around the hobby. We usually go through new release reminder. We do the box rip, this and that. Well, it's not like we're not going to be doing that. I mean, we will have parts of that, but it'll be a. A different type of episode. We're calling a little bit of an audible here. We got a very special guest that's going to help help us open some packs. So don't worry, we're still going to have a giveaway. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely a different type of show here. Uh, we'll do the new release reminders, of course. Yep. Uh, and then we'll bring the guest on. I mean, you guys already saw it on social media, yeah. so it's not like I'm hiding this big secret, right? You guys know who I'm talking about. But. Kind of, kind of a big deal. But we'll, I want to build it up. <laughs> It's all about the drama, kids. Yes. It's drama. We build the drama. Dramatic effect just adds to everything. So it's all about. But before we get to that uh, and before we get to the new release, reminders, <coughs> I do want to do the giveaway winner. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because on Monday, we ripped the Heritage High number with Meerkat, correct? We did. And Meerkat pulled the Aaron Judge uh, pinstripe relic. He did. So I guess if you obviously we want an auto. We all know that. That's how it goes when you're collecting. But if you're not going to get an auto, the relic I want to get is 1,000% Aaron Judge, especially yeah. right now. I, I would agree with that. Especially in the pinstripe. So I'm trying to see. There we go. We want. Was this at the point where – what did we ask? The I forgot what we asked. Favorite free agent signing? That's what it was. You're right because you and me – the reason I don't remember is because Meerkat and him definitely came up with it. Yeah, I was the brains behind the. Uh, he was operation. the brains behind that. Well, you guys know that, right? I'm the beauty. He's the brain. Also the bronze. That's how we do it here. Yeah, no beauty here. Face for radio. Somehow they let me on live. So. No, you see this kid? I don't know how he wasn't a model when he was a child. Oh, good lord! Fisher Price. Just get on with it. All right. Anyways, <laughs> so we asked you guys what your favorite free agent signing was this year in the MLB so far up until this point. <clears throat> so, Mr. Stevens, can I have a little drum roll in my ear, please? There it is. Bang. Congratulations to our winner. I'm going to zoom in there a little bit. There we go. How about Kristen Berend with the answer of I'm a Yankees homer, so I'm pumped to have Aaron Judge in pinstripes. He's a leader on and off the field. I think that is a great point that she makes. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I mean, any Yankee fan is pretty damn excited right now about Aaron Judge. Yeah. I'm excited about Josh Bell. So, And as a Red Sox fan, 
Kenley Jansen. Couldn't be more miserable. <laughs> Couldn't be more miserable. Kenley Jansen. That's a tangent for another day that I'll go on about signing Kenley Jansen. Sounds good. How about that? Yep. All right, Kristen. So once again, congratulations. Make sure you look out for a whisper from us on Twitch, the DA Car World account. And then once you see that, please send us your information to the chase at dacarworld.com. Want to get into some new releases? I, sh- I sure do. All right. I was hoping you'd, I, I thought you'd never ask. Yes. Let, we, we'll get on with the new releases. First off, we have, we have basketball. So basketball starting off with a Wednesday, 21-22 Contenders Optic Hobby. Here, you're looking for one autograph, two inserts, and parallels per box. Additionally, check out Rookie Variation Season Tickets. And don't forget, those rookies include Cade Cunningham, Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs, Jalen Green, Scotty Barnes, Josh Giddy. can name them so many, but just those for a few. And don't forget, there is one pack per box with six cards per pack. Yep, love that we are still getting products from the 21-22. Obviously, there's a lot of hype around that rookie mm-hmm. class, all those guys you just named right there. But uh, can't wait for some 22-23 stuff because, you know, Pablo Bancaro, mm-hmm. Jabari Smith. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, Chet is out for the year, but I'm sure we'll still see Chet stuff. Uh, so looking forward to that as well. But yes. still get that little last savoring of the 21-22 class while you still can. Absolutely. Okay, next for Wednesday. Very fitting that we have this releasing today. How about 21-22 Upper Deck SP Game Use Hockey Hobby Box? Here, there is one autograph or premium memorabilia card per box, three memorabilia and or purity insert cards, and two base, base parallel or retro rookies per box. Additionally, collect inked rookie sweaters, look for base set auto parallels, and there is one pack per box, with six cards per pack. Now, just like we were talking about the 21-22 basketball rookies, also 21-22 NHL rookies, remember, these are you're looking for a Cole Caulfield, you're looking for Trevor Zegras, mm-hmm. Seth Jarvis, guys like that. So not quite the the power of the Quinn, the Boldy, the Rossi, the Bemeers yeah. just yet. Yeah, not the not the series one peeps. Oh, I'm glad you po- glad you pointed that out. Look at that. If you guys didn't know, now you're going to know that our box rib giveaway today is going to be a box of 22-23 Series 1 Upper Deck Hockey. Exactly. Where we will be looking for the true Young Gun rookie cards that everybody chases. Quinn Power, Beniers, uh, Marco Rossi, and Matt Boldy among some of the top names there uh, that you're going to be looking for in that. But we're going to have a special guest to help us out with that. So I think... I think it's time, right? I, we've we've I let them wait time. long enough. I think it's time. We've we've built up the suspense enough. I think it's, we've. I think it's, we've given him too much time. I think his Timmy's is probably cooled off by now. <laughs> you know, it's probably cold. Yeah, I think I think it's time. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, former NHL player, broadcaster, our author. Uh, oh, how, oh they just let you in. Hey, you guys are making it out to be. First of all, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you for coming. I'm a little hungover. It was a rough night in Buffalo last night, which is always <laughs> awesome. Uh, you're making it out like Megan Fox or like Giselle's coming on or Tom Brady. Well, Bandura told me I, one of them were, and then I saw you walk yeah, in the building. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> thanks for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> thanks Absolutely. for being awesome. here. Yeah, what do, you, what do you think? What do you think of the digs? It's pretty damn cool. Not, not bad, huh? Yeah, not pretty. Listen, I, I, I've, I've been in Buffalo for the better part of... 30 years. I remember David Adams when it first opened up. So, yes, this is pretty damn cool. Great people. Um, great shop. This is, this is, I got it. I have my own podcast. I do, I don't have this. <laughs> I, I, I need this. We need to talk after. I was going to say, I think we can we can set you up with the guy. I'll have my people call your okay, people. Okay, yes. My people's right over there. She's in a pigtail. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, that, that's All my right. people right there. That's great, great. We'll shop. have a chat. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Then. I'll be there for the chat, though. I overheard you say you went to Chef's last night. I did, yes. How was that meal? Uh, great. They should serve it with toilet paper, though. Oh, 100%. <laughs> like, literally. They should bring out the spaghetti parm with toilet paper. And you'd be a lot better off. You don't have to rush off to the <laughs> nearest bathroom right after, but I phenomenal. Reson- I resonate with that Listen, so much. Listen, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, people think I'm crazy. I think sometimes you should just take the plate into the bathroom. Oh, uh, it's, <laughs> it's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's a must. 
It's, it, a, it's it a must. It's literally one of those places where you come to Buffalo, you know, there's places you go for your wings. Everyone has their own favorites, whatever it is. Yep. And you have, you have chefs, like mm-hmm. two things. It's a must. If you're here for two days, you're making a way to get to chefs. Yeah, I completely agree. It's an absolute stop. And of course, it's like one of those places. I don't know if you've ever been. Uh, Baltimore has a place called Jimmy Seafood. Okay. And it, it reminds me of chefs in the way where you walk in and everybody that's ever been inside that restaurant pictures all over the wall. Okay, yeah. Just like chefs. Yeah, it's cool. And, and they're good people. They're great for the community. They're, they've done so much for charities along the way. Louis, Louis is absolutely awesome. And listen, we used to go there every day on, on game day and eat and... It was an eight minute, eight minutes to get home. I know how exactly from chefs getting out because eight minutes. I don't want to talk about going to the bathroom the whole show, but <laughs> yeah, it was eight minutes to get home. But uh, yeah, chefs is chefs is the mainstay. Sped home, sped home. <laughs> uh, so we've uh, we've gathered up some questions for you that uh, have come from our minds. Okay. So if you don't mind, we want to just kind of talk Fire shop away. with you a Fire little away. bit. Fire away. Let's go. All right. You want to start, Yarger? Yeah. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll get right into it. You know, you had a, a long NHL career. What was your favorite moment as an NHL player? Everyone always brings up, like, Hattrick on Mother's Day, um, fight against Garth Snow. But for me, it, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was being drafted. Pulling the Sabres jersey on the first time in Montreal at the draft, only because I, I'd been cut in midget um, in Bantam. So I'd been cut, like, four years earlier, I was cut from my teams. Told not good enough to play midget hockey. And I was let, drafted last overall, Mr. Irrelevant. I was, I was Purdy um, in the <laughs> Quebec League. And, and you know, to, to, to be drafted five years later and it be Buffalo was probably, probably my coolest moment. Sounds about right. Yeah. And, you know, something, you know, you talk about putting on the Sabres sweater. I know at that time it was blue and gold. Yeah. I feel like I, I got to ask this to everybody. We asked it to Dom. Obviously got to ask you too. Blue and gold guy, or are you kind of happy to see the black and red back? I, I like seeing the black and red back, but if you had gave me a like unequivocally, you had to choose one. I'm blue and gold. It's it's where they started. Yeah. Um, I, I like tinkering. I like all the the different combinations that they go with, but I'm blue and gold for sure. Yeah, something so clean, the simple about ugly. it. Like you, you can <laughs> sell it any way you want. Black and red's nice, but the goat head's ugly. Like yeah. the saber is the saber. Like really? Yeah, yeah. I'm starting and, to notice they, that when they went there with a slug. Like what, what the hell was that? Yeah, I think if you ask a lot of people from when the sabers first started, you're going to get the same answer of blue and gold. Yeah, I think it's blue. And I, mean, gold I, I like the black and red, and I love the retro. I love them coming back to it. But if if, if unequivocally you had to pick, listen, if I was going to do it, if I was if I was running all the shows and, and the bills, and I, I I think you do it like everyone is is blue, red, and white. I think like Pittsburgh, yeah, black and yes. gold, and mm-hmm. you know yep. we, we live in Ottawa. Our th- our three teams, it's not the NFL, it's the CFL, so it doesn't really count. Hey, the Red Blacks, baby, red go Blacks. Red Blacks! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I, I, I just think it makes it easier, and it it, it just makes it universal mm-hmm. for everyone. That that that's your color. So that's what I would do mm-hmm. if I was in charge. But obviously, yeah. they haven't asked my opinion. I mean, I feel like that makes sense. But you know, in your career, you were known as the tough guy to go toe to toe with people. In your personal opinion, who was maybe the toughest person that you went toe to toe with, or that might be on your same team? Yeah, well, Rob Ray is as tough as they get, and I was fortunate to play with Rob and, and Brad and Bob Bugner. But you know, for Brad and Rob, I played with them for seven years, and I, I didn't see these guys lose too many fights. So, um, as teammates, as friends, those guys are as, are as tough as it gets. Uh, Bob Probert, God rest his soul. He's, Listen, I fought Ty Domi, fought a lot of tough guys. Tony Twist, I never fought, but uh, a guy like Bob Probert, he could play too. And, and that's probably the most important thing. He could play, but man, he, he, you'd have to kill him to beat him. And, and <laughs> that, that's the only way you could ever beat him. He could take punches, and he's, he also was the, the nicest guy. Um, most, you know, the fraternity of, of the NF, uh, NHL tough guy. Um, you fight, you, you have a beer after, you talk, uh, but certainly one of the best guys ever. I feel like some of the fighters are the nicest humans ever. Absolutely. I, I think you, you, most of you come from the same background and, and you literally fight your way to do what you want to do, right? Sure. Like you, you fight every night and you protect your teammates. And I think there's an appreciation of other guys, what they do, but you're also very appreciative to be in the National Hockey League. And I think that's that appreciation that those guys have for, for making a living doing what they do. Um, 
they, they really do appreciate it. So something that you talked about there, obviously, you know, uh, either with these guys or against these guys, you're going out and having beers with them and things like that uh, afterward. So something I want to know that maybe you could speak to that I always thought was very interesting. I'll give you an example. Uh, I've seen a video of George LaRock, okay, mic'd up. Yeah. And he says to the guy, you want to square up? All right, good luck. And next thing you know, boom, gloves are off. They're dropping the mitts. They're fighting. So can you talk to that a little bit? Like, what is it? It's not always a hatred for the other guy, right, yeah. necessarily? Yeah. yeah, sometimes it is. And I, I, I know the fight you're talking about. It was against L.A. Yeah. He was in Arizona. It was a Vanis, a uh, big European guy, like 265 pounds. We understand, like, if I'm playing for Buffalo, I'm, I'm fighting for the fans. I'm fighting for my teammates, and I'm trying to change the momentum of a game. Or I'm standing up for a teammate. It, it's it's one or the other. Yeah. So a lot of times it's not. I don't have a hatred for the other guy. I just I have to change the momentum. We're down two to nothing, or someone just hit one of our our skilled guys or or my line mate, and I have to come in and protect him. I want him to feel safe out there. So I might not even know the guy. I might never have seen the guy before, but I have to do that because I'm playing for Buffalo. I'm playing for the city of Buffalo. I'm playing for the jersey. Now when I get traded to Pittsburgh and I come back to Buffalo, now it's completely the opposite. Now I'm playing for Pittsburgh. And Rob Ray had dinner at my house. We had a bottle of wine the night before a game. Second period, he's like, hey, you got to slow down or we got to fight. And I'm like, Lindy sent me out and said, better slow down. I'm like, you know me. <laughs> I'm not slowing down. <laughs> like, it's not happening. He's right. like, well, we have to go. I'm like, okay, let's go. And, yeah. and again, I love Rob. But I understand right now I have, I have a Penguin jersey on and he has a Buffalo jersey. He's going to do the best for his city and his team. And that was probably the hardest time it ever happened because you're fighting a, a true friend. Right. And, and now you're back in the city where you love. And it was just a business decision that I had to leave for various reasons. But now you're fighting like I, I, I love the Buffalo fans. Yeah. And now I'm, right. I'm enemy number one. And then I come <laughs> in and that's what I have to do to have my job. So that's probably the hardest part of it. But yes, you don't always hate the guy. And sometimes like a guy like Lyle Odeline, you fucking hate him. You, you hate him. <laughs> you know, and, Plain and, and simple. Wanna, and you want to fight him every time. Right. Plain <laughs> and simple. That kind of leads to my next question. I, I, I was curious, you know, there's players in every league where they're worshipped by their home team. Opposing crowds can't stand them. How did you embrace that role? I loved it. If I went into Philadelphia and I'd, I'd say that's like the arena and we could talk about football and, you know, the Eagles fans are, are synonymous with being absolutely crazy as right. are Bills fans. And as a, as a player, that's what you love. Right. Like you love to play in front of like Bills mafia isn't, isn't just this little thing. It, it's, it's mainstay. I have, I have Bills people from Buffalo come up to my golf tournament in the summer and I host 24, 30 guys and they're slamming Friggin' tables all over the place. I mean, <laughs> it costs me more money in tables in the weekend than it does to play golf. But that's what you love. You, lo you love the fans. So when you're playing in front of Buffalo fans or Philadelphia, because I'd say those are the two craziest, yeah. uh, you, you absolutely love playing in front of them. When you go into those towns and now you're, you're the enemy, well, if I'm, not getting, if I'm not getting the middle finger, if I'm not <laughs> getting shit thrown at me, beers, I'm not doing my job. Because that's my job. Right. My job is to have them thinking about me. Eric Lindros to think about me. Eric Eric to worry about me calling his mom, whatever. Right. You know, yeah. his, his wife, whatever it may be, to get him <laughs> off his game. Get him under his There, game. the fans are going to get on top of me. And Pat yeah. LaFontaine can do what he's doing. Alexander McGillney can do what he's doing. Daniel Breer, they can do what they're doing. And hopefully, they're going to take a penalty on me. We're going to score on the power play. So you embrace it because that's... It's 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 a little bit of head games, right? You wanna you wanna do anything you can to, to gain an edge. And my edge was getting them to think about me or come after me and take penalties, and we can score goals and win the game. That's what it's all about. So your analysis right there uh, kind of brings me to a, another question I want to ask here in terms of fast forward to today's game. Uh, you know, you see much less. It seems yeah. year and year, much less fighting, much yeah. less. Uh, physical. So do you think they're, I don't want to say a place in the game for it, but those role players, do you think they're still important that they should have a bigger presence in the game to kind of open up those guys a little more? I, I still think there's a place in the game for it. It's never going to be as archaic as it was in the mid-90s or 80s, whatever it may be. And thankfully, 
because the era that we played in, it was scary. Yeah. I mean, it was, there's some nights you didn't know what was going to happen. That's, it's not great to go to work and not know what's going to happen. Like literally a brawl could break out and your face could be mangled. Is there a place for fighting in the game? I think any physical sport, uh, especially hockey, um, and I, listen, I'm old school, but I'm new school. I, I have a kid that plays in the East Coast League that's a talented guy. He's not a yeah. fighter. But I think there's a place in the game to stand up for your teammates and, and protect them. I never want to see it go back to where it was. Having said that, if you can fight a little bit and protect your teammates and you can be a pest, you can still get under people's skin now. There's, Absolutely. It's actually easier now. Now you don't have to worry about getting beaten up. You can run around all you want. If I was playing in this era, man, would it be great. I wouldn't have as many scars. Um, I'd probably be more valuable to your team, and Mm -hmm. you really wouldn't have to fight. And there's no way they can get back at you, Mm -hmm. which when I said the things I did or did the things I did, I knew I had to answer to a guy 6'4", 250 on the other team at some point. And if I didn't decide that I wanted to, he was going to take his pound of flesh. Now you don't have to do it. So I think there's even more of a role now where people don't think – I think there's more of a role for that rat to be out there and really do whatever he wants because you have carte blanche. No one can do anything about it, right. which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I kind of like the way darlene has been playing this year because I feel like he's getting a little pe- – like obviously oh, the skills there. unreal, yeah. But, you know, he's getting a little pesty too. He's not afraid of anybody. You know, he doesn't back down. That he has decor, no problem. obviously, they aren't going to make the playoffs. They had a big win last night. Um, it's, it's not a playoff team. And that's goaltending. They're going to have to address that at some point when you're counting on a 41-year-old to be your number one guy. It's, sure. it's hard. Right. He's had a really good career, career, but it starts in goal. Listen, we pl- I played with Dominic Hasek, who's the best goaltender that's ever played. There's there's no one. Everyone could talk Patrick Waugh, everyone and Marty Brodeur, great goalies. Obviously Hall of Famers. No one's Dominic Hasek. So we had, we had the luxury of playing a different style because we had so much confidence in Dom. We knew what he was going to do. And you look at, you know, Owen Powers, unbelievable. He's going to be Victor Hedman, I think, better. I, I, I really do. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, Victor absolutely. Hedman's going to be a Hall of Famer. 100%. Owen Power, I, I have that much appreciation. I've watched him play when he was in Chicago Steel in the USHL at 16. I'm like, this, this kid doesn't belong. Like, this kid's just different. Darlene taking that next step. And the physical element he's adding to his game. So they have a lot of the pieces. And, and Tage Thompson, I've known his dad for a long time. Tice played against my son. And Tage, when, I, when he was playing at University of or, uh, UConn, uh, you could see that they, they had those attributes. So a lot of these young guys are here for a long time. And they just locked up Tage for, I think, eight years. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the pieces are in place. Uh, you got to find a goalie. And if you don't find a goalie, you're going to be wasting these guys. So that's that's operation number one if I'm uh, Kevin Adams. Completely sure. agree. If you look at the standings, top in goals four, Buffalo Sabres, near the bottom in goals allowed, Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. I mean, and, and and part of that is youth, right? Like they're talented guys, and I like what what uh, Don Granado is doing. And again, great guy for these these kids. He's yeah, a great sure. human being, a great coach. Uh, his brother coached me in Colorado, but he, he, when, when you're a young team, you're going to make mistakes defensively, offensively. You, you don't really teach that much offensively. You let them you let the horses run wild, but defensively, you're going to make mistakes. And I think that you know. The, the culmination of them making mistakes and then not having a true number one goaltender, that's why they are where they are. Okay. Going back to the discussion of how the game's changed, how do you feel the NHL has done with uh, these new rule changes regarding player safety? I, I Listen, we're, we're getting there. there. There was none when I was there. Right. So I, I remember one of the first times I literally almost knocked out cold, um, came in, <laughs> I got two Advils and an ice pack <laughs> and literally, like, go back out. Like not, yeah. not how you feel, like, not right. You're standing. So you're, you're, you're fine to go. Yeah. I didn't know where I was. I could have been in, in Rome, New yeah. York, Buffalo, New York. I could have been in Rome, Italy. I, I had no <laughs> clue where, where I was. And I, I, I think with the headshots, uh, guys are traveling and, and we see it at in, in every sport especially football you know the headshots targeting is the same as the headshot in hockey now so they've they've done a great job you're never going to take concussions out of the game mm-hmm. you're never going to take them out of football that's 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 the reality and we know that as players coming in you you're, you're going to get hit and sometimes you're going to get hurt but not allowing a guy to go back 5 minutes later 
keep him at a week, yeah. make sure he goes through all the protocols. Uh, because you honestly, you got to keep the player from hurting himself. Mm-hmm. Because if someone tells me the next day after I get a concussion, you can't play, I'm going to lie. I, I'm going to lie because I want to I play. Yeah. I want to play for my team. I want to play for my city. Right. I, I want to be back in the lineup. I don't want to let the guys down. And, and you're so ingrained to do anything you can to win and, and be a part of that team. So I think the biggest part of all those rules is keeping the player from hurting himself. Yeah, yeah. Big time. Uh, so, you know, we're talking about the game currently, obviously, the future of the game. So a couple things here. Uh, I want to get into the collecting aspect as well. So I do have the box here. Do you want to help us out and absolutely, rip a little bit? Absolutely. I'm All a right. big memorabilia guy, too. Like, I've, I've collected since my, my first year, and a lot of times I remember asking Stevie Eiserman for a stick one day before the game. And he, we had the same agent, but I'm like, hey, he was my favorite player. Like, I just absolutely loved him. Great, great human being. And I'm like, hey, Stevie, and warm. I'm like, can I get a stick? He's like, absolutely. But you don't touch me all game. I'm like, absolutely. Free pass, man. Just get, get that stick over. I'm like, do you want one of mine? He's like, no, nah, okay. <laughs> He's like, no, you, you know what? You keep it. You're probably going to need it. Uh, right? yeah. Well, I used, we, we had the same agent, so I used to, uh, I used to call our, our agent. His name was Larry. And uh, his secretary would answer the phone. And I'd be like, hi, 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 sweetie, how are you? It's Larry. And she's like, yeah, can I tell him it's, it's Stevie Y? So agent would get on the phone, and he'd be like, hey, Stevie, what's up? I'm like, no, oh, it's Matthew Barnaby. I, I just knew he'd answer if it was Stevie. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Connor McDavid, not a bad player. Yep, right off the top there. Uh, but, you know, we are looking. We were talking earlier about Owen Power. Uh, Owen Power, Jack Quinn are in this series. Yep. So those are the guys we'll be walking or looking for. Okay. Uh, you'll be looking for Rossi and Boldy from Minnesota. Beneers. Uh, Beneers is in here as well. Okay. So a lot of guys. There's um, Mason McTavish in there. Does he have a card in McTavish, yet? I don't know if he's in this set. Okay. He might be in another set, I think. I don't think I don't think he has a young guns in this set. Okay. His his dad's a really good friend, really good player, obviously third overall pick to Anaheim. We were supposed to go to his game Monday. He was playing in Ottawa, but uh yeah, terrific player. These young kids are so good. Zegris and and power and like the future is so, so good. And I I'm sick of I'm sick of the old school people and people like John Tortorella talking about the <laughs> mission and being like, oh, this is bad for the game. I'm like, bad for the game. It's not even it's not even being cocky anymore. It's it's the best way to get the puck in the net from behind the net. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't walk out. It takes you like three seconds. Right. Right. To scoop it and go. It's 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 a play now. Like yeah. old school guys. Yeah, I evolve. I've, I've noticed that about Tortorella. He's, he's always yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing how he still wants the coach in the league. Oh yeah. Yet he's always talking. Nonsense here. Okay. So as you can see here. Is that Yep, Makar. Uh, probably think, the best defenseman. When he's all said and done, he will be the best defenseman of all time, I believe. Wow. I think Darlene's going to give him a run for the money on the Norris this year, though. Oh, he will, for sure. You know, yeah. Ooh, yep. Little nice. guy's portraits good. of Dried Seidel. Uh, you know, I'm curious. You know, you were talking about juniors, uh, things like that. You know, your son playing in, in the East Coast. Yeah. So for collectors, I guess. Is there anybody that you kind of got your eye on that you've seen that's coming up through, you know, OHL, uh, juniors, anything like that, that maybe people should keep an eye out for? Well, Connor, Connor Bedard. I, I, yeah. probably, probably in the States, not as much, but if you're Canadian, you, the kid's the kids phenomenal. He was great on the, the, the world junior team last year. He'll be the captain <laughs> on the world junior team. Um, he's, av- he's averaging like three points a game in junior right now, like a, as a 17-year-old. As a 16-year-old, he destroyed the league. Uh, one of the wick, he, he's really, he has an Austin Matthews shot. He's only about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, uh, but he's the next stud. He's, he's, he's the next, he's the next dude. There you go. There's a nice one. Literally was just talking about them. How about a Young Guns checklist? Rossi and Boldy on the same card. That's nice. Yeah, Boldy played for the U.S. development team. Uh, Rossi played for the Ottawa 67s, pretty damn good player. Missed all last year because he was injured. He was yeah. hurt. Uh, but two, two awesome players. Now, so, go ahead, you I, first. So, you mentioned being a collector, big mem guy. What part of your collection means the most to you? Tiger Woods. Oh boy, Tiger Woods. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta fill me in. What do you have, Tiger Woods? Big um, golf guy. I, yeah, I, he's he's my favorite athlete of all time. No one even close. Uh, so, I have a couple Sports Illustrated. Uh, signed copies, and then I have a print of him playing at, uh, uh, it's one of 50, and it's him playing at St. Andrews um, in, in early 2000s. So that that's displayed up there, and 
listen, I, I'm giving a lot of things to my kids, a lot of memorabilia. I probably have 15 Gretzky jerseys signed, um, just a ton of ton of stuff, ton of sticks. But the Tiger Tiger stuff is is very special. Uh, I did a couple signings back in the early 90s. I have a few Michael Jordan stuff that I really like, a couple Shaq stuff. Nice. So hockey stuff, it, it was easy, right? Right. You, you right. play Gretz, yeah. Mass. I played online with Mass. Any Hall of Famer that I ever played with, Joe Sackick, Forsberg, all their jerseys, obviously all their sticks. But it, it, it's important to me because they're, they're friends. Uh, those are all signed to my son, but the tiger stuff, man, that's never, that, that, that might actually come in the casket when I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I, Be buried with it, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want the three iron that he almost got, or he did get hit with from, uh, from his wife. I'd really like that. The <laughs> tuck, one that tuck that under yeah, your right, Yeah, put that. That, that, would, that would be a great piece. That would go for a lot. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of hockey memorabilia, I feel like this is fitting because he just scored his 800th last night. Did, have, did you ever get the chance to interact with Alexander Ovechkin? Or? Very little at an All-Star game after, like, post-retiring. Post re but a, a funny story. He was a rookie. I was, I was in Dallas, and I was a right winger. He comes down. He hits me, takes the puck, strips the puck, and he shoots at five hole on Marty Turco, literally in, like, a two-and-a-half-second <laughs> span. <laughs> he come back to the bench. Our coach is Dave Tippett. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I go... <laughs> That kid's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, kid, that kid's gonna be a pretty good player. <laughs> just took the puck. Not my bad. One. I'm like, I didn't make an excuse. I'm like, he just hit me, took the puck, put it in the back of the net, did his celebration. I'm like, the kid's like 18 years old. I'm like, kid's a pretty good player, man. I'm like, what do you want? I'm like, yeah, he's what, ended up. Pretty, what do you want from me? <laughs> Best goal scorer of all time. Best goal scorer of all time. Yeah, 100. percent To do hey. what he's doing in this era with these goalies is ridiculous. No, oh, yeah. ridiculous. Now listen, I don't want to have all the fun, you know. I want you to join in too. So like, you want to yeah, you yeah. want to grab a few? Yeah, field? yeah, good. All right, fire yeah. it up. I, you were being Go selfish. Ahead. I was being selfish, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't want to cut you off. This I was just this, showing respect. That's okay. It's okay. Troy being it's, selfish, no. It's, it's, oh, look it's, at the in-depth. Oh, in in the, in the, the Timmy's oh, glass. Oh, the Timmy's in the Timmy's <laughs> cup. There. <laughs> thank thank God there's no noogies yeah, or something right. in there. Right? <laughs> Backwashing myself. <laughs> all right, what do we got here? What do we got? Jake Gensel on the bottom. Look at that. Lawson Kraus. Sorokin. Joel Farabee. He's a heck of a player. I think he's hurt right now. Garnet Hathaway. Jordan Cairo coached against him when he was in Sarnia in the OHL. I was like, this guy's a stud. Yeah. He ended my co coaching career because of his power play. He was so good. That was it. Hironic, he was in uh, Saginaw when I was there. Brandon Hagel and Gensel. Jake Gensel. I always, I always like to ask, too, so, like, for you. We didn't get any Hall of Famers in this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this, this one's going to be a lot of the younger kids. A lot yeah, of yeah. the no, 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 I'm, a lot I'm, current guys. None of those guys are going to the Hall of Fame either. Though. That's it. Um, I always got to ask, what was it like for you that, you know, you were kind of a collector growing up and that? The first time that you were on a hockey car that you saw yourself pictured. Well, my, my wife's in the studio right now. I remember we were, I just got called up in 1993 and I signed my contract and I played a couple games at the end of the year, one in the, or two in the regular season, one in the playoffs. We lost to Montreal in four games straight, all in overtime. Um, but it was my childhood team. So we leave there. About a month later, we, we rent a houseboat seven 18 year olds that don't know how to drive a boat. We're actually cooking with barbecues near the gas and like just stupid stuff. <laughs> but my brother calls me and goes, hey, your, your hockey card's out. So we ended up driving like an hour and a half to go buy this hockey card because it was the first time I was ever on a hockey card. Yeah. We drove an hour and a half and then came back up and I had my card. I had the mullet, the half a tooth. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> was That's a good look. It was, it, it was pretty big deal. It's yeah. Pretty, pretty awesome. And now you get hockey cards sent to you like every week and you're signing them. I, I don't get people that don't like signing autographs, like, or they like whatever sport it is. Like you practice your autograph as a kid yep. a million times to get it perfect. And then you're like, I'm not signing your autograph. Like oh, anytime you anyone asks me to sign an autograph, less now I actually ask people to ask me to sign the autograph because I have gray hair and I'm old. But people that like shun people for signing autographs, I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, it's the greatest compliment ever. You've practiced this autograph for so long. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, Drew Doughty, Hall of Famer. Does it bother you sometimes? Oh no, look at this one. Uh-oh. Does it bother you, you sometimes find? when, oh, oh, there he is. The red-headed stepchild. <laughs> Never heard of him. Hey, Jack Eichel, does he have not the worst hair in he, the world? Just you know? looks like a Brillo pad. It's awful. It's it's so recognizable, though. One time, I'm yeah. not lying to you, I went to a comedy show at Helium. Yeah. And show starts 10 minutes in. Three three bigger dudes walk in and sit at the table right in front of me. Oh, look at that guy. So one one's Thank Reinhardt, God. Ovi. One is Bogosian. Yeah. And then the next one is this big, floofy haired, like curly haired dude, Eichel. Yeah. It's so his hair is recognizable, but I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. No, there's no way that guy would ever get laid <laughs> if he wasn't a hockey player. Oh, can I say that? No. I'll tell you right too now. Long. I'll tell you too. Nico Heischer, heck of a player. If you look at him and if he grew his hair any longer. This guy's really good. Yeah. Drake Batherson. I feel I'm like really he'd good. look like Kenny G, a redheaded Kenny G. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Right? Yeah, he, he's got a, like, I I know he's not popular in Buffalo and shouldn't be. Um, I wasn't a big Reinhardt fan, the person. Yeah. Um, great player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when you go to like Bogosian, what a great dude, mm-hmm. awesome guy. And there's a lot of great players. Jack Eichel's a great, great player. Uh, but now they got great players, but better, better human beings. And I think that's equally as important. Clayton Keller coached him. Great story on him. Really, really good player. I'm coaching him. Um, so they had five first rounders on their Pee Wee team from St. Louis that ended up five first rounders in the NHL. We're playing a tournament in Boston. <laughs> and he had 46 points in six games in this tournament. <laughs> and he, he literally had like seven points in this game in the third period. He's like, hey, coach, do you, do you, do you want me to score? Or do you want me to like just deke everyone out and like give someone an update? And I'm like, hey, dude, you do whatever you whatever want. Whatever you want. <laughs> he like deke everyone. He was su- such a great kid. Keep like, it up. Awesome. Connor McDavid, Alex DeBrinket, the cat. Brenda Cat. Ooh. That Matt that Razzle Dazzle, Dazzle right there. there. Jason Robertson. Matt How about... Shane. How about his numbers? He's unbelievable. People don't realize. Yep. Look at his numbers, like his 150, first 150 games in the NHL. Put him right beside Connor McDavid's. Oh, I've seen, I seen that yeah. graphic. There, it's it's, it's identical. Yeah. He's it's unbelievable. Identical. Do you think, you know what? That brings Cal me Peterson to a question that's like. waivers. Person, person like Jason Robertson, obviously unreal numbers. Yeah. But do you think it's because of the market that he's in? Yes. That he doesn't necessarily get the yes. nationwide exposure? Yeah, a- absolutely. If, if he was in Toronto, there'd be a statue outside already. Like his numbers are. <laughs> He'd be outside. Listen, he, numbers would be in the rafters they, already. They, don't get me on Toronto. They're already <laughs> building uh, the the route for the parade. Yeah. They'll the one co- that's taken them collapse. how many decades, right? Jordan Biddington, I hate this guy. <laughs> so why does someone just not destroy this guy? Well, what did he. A couple weeks ago, he came out, yeah. tried to play the puck, and somebody just ran right through him. Well, no, yeah. he tried to run him over. That's what it was. Yeah. For him and first, he got and ran then, over. And this yeah. is like the third time he's done this something. This is like the 15th time he's done it. Like, <laughs> how this guy gets away with it? Like, take your five-minute major and lay a beating on him. Like, you'll, you'll be a cult hero in whatever city and throughout the NHL. Like, right, someone right. beat that's, this that's, guy up. That's coming from a guy who has beat up a goal yeah, before. Yeah, so my only win. <laughs> <laughs> My only W. That's a pretty good W to have in your name, though, if you're going to have one. All right, we got some good players in this. I, I'm stealing this. This is coming home with me. There you go. He's taking it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. You're yeah. going to be missing a Sorry. few packs. Sorry, guys. No big deal. That's all right. Uh, why don't you ask another one, and I'll get going here. I'll rip a few more, and then we'll yeah, have perfect. a few more. So just talking about players that are currently in the league, I thought this would be a fun one. If there was one player you could pick to fight currently, who would it be? Oh, wow. Besides Jordan Bennington. Yeah, well, yeah, it might be Jordan it definitely Bennington. would be Jordan Bennington. <laughs> one play. That's a tough one. Probably Brad Marchand. Probably oh, Marchand. That's a good gotcha. one. Yeah. I mean, he's like the ultimate pest because I would draw a penalty, whatever, get people pissed off at you, and then guys would come on and play the power play. He draws the penalty. He pisses you off, but he's also on the power play scoring the goal. So he, he's like the epitome of what you want a pest to be. So, and he's ugly. Like all the <laughs> memes with him and the little little guy when he gets angry. Little rat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's yeah. He, he'd be number one, but no, he'd be number two. Jake Bennington for sure. <laughs> Who do you think right now is probably the best tough guy in the league? I know there's a few of them. Pro- probably, go, probably go with Wilson. Tom, Tom Wilson? Yeah. yeah. Probably go with Tom Wilson. I know Reeves is tough, and 
there, there's there's some tough guys out there, but Wilson, man, he's so valuable. I know a lot of people hate him and they think he's dirty and he's not like, listen, he plays the game hard. He can score. He can play on your top line. He can play on your fourth line. And he can fight your tough guys. So uh, I, I'd go with Tom Wilson. Hey, uh, uh, before, you know, with all these stories that you're telling us, all these things you got, it's almost like you should be writing a book, huh? It, yeah. You know what? Yep. I almost graduated high school, never read a book, but I am now an author. I, I wrote a book, yeah. There yeah. you go. So I told, I said to David earlier, I feel like Jimmy Fallon. You know, Jimmy Fallon always like holds up the thing he's promoting before his guest comes up. So ladies and gentlemen, we have it right here. Matthew Barnaby, Unfiltered. So we'd love to get into the book with you a little yeah, bit Yeah, fire away. Yeah, yeah tell us, just tell us a little bit about uh, what's inside this uh, book. Yeah, I, was, I, I always wanted to write a book. I thought I had a pretty cool story. Uh, I was, like I said, I, I was cut in, in Bantam and Midget and last overall pick in, in junior. I grew up in a single parent family, like a lot of a lot of people. That's not anything special, but I, I, I just think the perseverance and uh, I always wanted to to, to, to to write those things down. And I think through COVID, I had a lot of time on my hands. Uh, it takes about nine months, 10 months to a year to really put it all together. I mean, 75,000 words is a lot of words. Oh. It's, it, it's a lot of words. For yes, someone who didn't graduate high school, it's a lot of words. Uh, but it was, it, was, it was therapeutic. It was a good way of, of going through therapy without paying 250 an hour to someone to, to listen. Yeah. It would just be me and my wife downstairs with, with a pen and, and paper. So uh, in the book, you got stories from inside the locker room, stuff that no one would ever hear. There's a lot of, there's a lot of shit that goes on in a locker room. You don't always get along with each other. Right. Some great nights on the road with Dennis Rodman and Rob Ray making out with a, a guy. Um, <laughs> but it's 2022, so that's okay. Yes. So I'd say he's probably the only person that wasn't happy that the book was coming out. But oh, listen, no one's going to prison. Um, no one's getting divorced from their wives. And it, it's kind of like one of my favorite shows of all time is Law and Order. Some of the names and, and places may have changed. Uh, but these stories are real. Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so the suspense is killing the, me. That's it. So, yeah, stories like that, you know, going out with Dennis Rodman on the road and uh, just just so many things that happened. Guys that I liked playing with, guys that I didn't uh, like, uh, just all the Hall of Famers that I got to play with, but all all the true stuff, all all the stuff. And some of the verbiage in there is is graphic. It's all real, and I wanted to be true to myself and it's funny Chris when he asked me to come on today with with you guys I'm like okay like what type of show and and this and he goes be authentic be true to yourself and that's exactly what I am here and exactly what the book is and now I know you have the book titled unfiltered you also have a podcast unfiltered which I watched a little bit and it's it's a riot it's a good time did you did you like because oh. my wife's dyslexic did you see the dyslexic spelling bee yet I did not that's a good one I'm gonna have to that's check a good that one, one. Yeah. Oh, we gotta watch, we gotta watch that, that later I took my three stupidest friends and then I put it with my beautiful wife and they had a spelling bee yeah they're 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 not rocket science it's she <laughs> is but they they aren't I'm gonna have to check that out yeah. so vacuum is so, a tough one for some people <laughs> <laughs> it's a real tough one yeah the title unfiltered why unfiltered? It's exactly who I am. Yeah, I don't, I don't pretend to be someone I'm not. I don't pretend to be, hey, listen, if I'm in a room full of doctors or presidents, I'm going to be the exact same person as I am. So that's, I'm never going to change. I'm never going to pretend to like someone. Um, I'm never going to be fake to someone. Um, so just unfiltered seemed uh, like the natural fit. It was, again, my wife came up with that. I, I, the stories are all mine. Um, the cover I thought was awesome. It was very important to be in a Buffalo Sabres jersey. That was uh, first and foremost. I have a lot of cool pictures out there, but this one kind of really captures, I think, myself, my personality. And like I said, it was very important to be in a Buffalo uh, Buffalo jersey, but... I like celebrating. I like having fun, and uh, it just seemed like the picture, perfect picture for, uh, for 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 the cover. But uh, unfiltered was 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 a no brainer. In, in the red and black jerseys. In the red and black. <laughs> in the red and black. Didn't score many in the in the blue and yellow. I didn't get <laughs> off the bench much that first year, so it was tough to find one scoring. And uh, I, we were going to do fighting, but it, I didn't want it. It's, it's not a fighting book. 
Right. Like, there's lots of stories about fighting and, and all of that and, and being like, I, I can't nap in the afternoons anymore. I'm 50 yeah. years old. I can't nap because I associate mentally, subconsciously. When I used to nap in the afternoon, I had, it was like you're going to a schoolyard fight at 3 o'clock. Right. I knew when I woke up, I was probably going to have to fight. So I still lay in bed and my mind subconsciously goes, doesn't, doesn't allow me to sleep. So all those kinds of things are, are in the book, but it's, it's really a, a, a peek behind uh, closed doors. Uh, you, we see on the cover there, obviously, uh, four words by Messier and Lindros. So uh, what was their reactions when you kind of reached out to them and you know, decided to ask like, hey, do you think you guys could uh, 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 contribute to the book? Yeah. It, uh, it, it was a resounding yes, uh, absolutely. And I just said, again, I, I, don't, I, I don't want fluff. And if you, if, you, if you read messes, essentially he says it's a story of a, a dream of everybody, but we all make mistakes. I've made mistakes. And, and that's, you know, that's part of life. And you know, part of making mistakes is, is getting back up. So uh, as much as I wanted to be authentic in my book and, and how I am, I wanted their quotes to be authentic as well. And don't sugarcoat anything. Do whatever you feel like putting, that, that's what we're going to put on there. So, you know, for mess, mess, mess took about six weeks and really took his time in, in writing it. So, you know, I grew up watching Mark Messier as an idol. Like he was on, the, he was on those 80s teams with Gretzky and Curry. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's just to have him write your forward. And then he was my line mate in, in New York. And Eric Lindros wrote my forward as well. A guy that I hated me more than anyone in this world. More than I hated. I've said some of the nastiest things to this man. And then he was my roommate for three years in New York. I did play more games with him, so I got the remote when we were in the room. That's a story for another day. But <laughs> uh, two great players, two Hall of Famers, two friends. And to have those guys write your forwards, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty humbling. Amazing. Troy, if you show the cover, the top of the cover of the book, there's actually a quote on there. It says, a story that should inspire any boy or girl to never give up on their dreams. Coming from Mess, how does that quote make you feel? Uh, I could cry. <laughs> I could cry. Um, and it's funny, you show the pictures on the back. That's the hardest part about writing a book is picking pictures. Because there's so many so pictures. Many. Yeah. There's so many pictures. And that's my mom and that's my, my daughter Taylor and my son Matthew when they, when they were young. And... Uh, picking picking the pictures is probably the hardest damn thing in the in that whole book. But yeah, uh, very very humbling to to read those. And again, I was a kid watching Mark Messier play, and mm -hmm. he's he's one of the greatest players to ever play the game. And to to call Mark Messier a friend and have him do that for my book is is pretty special. So two things. We got six packs left, so I figured right. how about we split three and three. All right. Sounds, sounds good. good. Uh, You're not a good then, agent. You should have taken four. That's what they usually do, right? Yeah, no. I, I'm not in that kind nah, of business. Okay. You know, I'm right. in the business to have fun, talk, yeah, there we chop go. it up. You I know? love this. This studio is awesome. So, you. so you'll be back is what you're saying. I'm definitely going to be back. Great. Definitely going to be back. Judging by the chat, I think they definitely want Matthew Barnaby. They're to loving it, huh? Off, yeah, so. is the chat going good? Hey, Chat's guys. going good. <laughs> You guys chat, are awesome. Love it here. Chat's saying they're looking for an audio book. An up, she, How about yeah. that? I, we are working on it. Great. We are, Great. I, and I. One of the things is, if I do an audio book, it has to be my voice. Like, mm. I'm not having someone else else record it. David Pasternak, one of my favorite players in the league. Love Absolutely pasta. love him. Uh, Dylan Strom, not very good. Tias. <laughs> oh, there you go. Back there's, home is there's a young awesome. One. Uh, Jack McGain, McBain, he's from Toronto, played for Junior Canadians. There you go. Sean Dursey played for uh, Owen Sound, a really, really good player. He was here last night. Actually, I saw Aya Follow's parents, who was from Buffalo, played at Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he was at our signing yesterday, so that, that, was, that was pretty oh, cool. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, Troy Terry, another really good player. So without obviously giving away uh, too much in the book, because obviously we want people to go out there and, and read it, uh, is there some things that, you, some little nuggets in there that you think the people who do read will be like, wow, kind of kind of surprises to them? Yes. Um, I, I, I would say the, 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 the biggest surprise is maybe for Buffalo people, like why I left Buffalo. You know, I ended up asking for a trade uh, and it probably goes back to, to my childhood. You know, I never knew my father. Um, 
So I've always been loyal to people that are loyal to me. And I think, you know, when you, when you ask for a trade, I love Buffalo. I probably could have played here my whole career. Yeah. And, and absolutely loved it here. It was nothing ever about. And sometimes when you leave, there's misconceptions through media. Listen, I've gotten into trouble. Um, it's been all over the news. I get to clarify those things. I get to, to, to clear up some of the fallacies that misconceptions when you're in the media sometimes, you can print something and there's no recourse or it's on the back page where no one sees. So clearing up some of those things, but why I left Buffalo uh, truly came down to me being loyal to Ted Nolan. And I think that's me being loyal in my life. Like when I was in junior, they fired our coach. I asked to be traded right away because I didn't believe he should be traded. He should be fired. When Ted Nolan was let go, I didn't feel like he got his due. He was coach of the year. And then they let him go and they brought in Lindy Ruff. It wasn't Lindy Ruff's fault. Of course he's gonna take that job. And I took it out on Lindy Ruff, so I could have been a little bit more mature in the way that I handled it, but you know, you make decisions and you live with it. Um, I was fortunate I got to go play in Pittsburgh. It was a great spot. But now I look back and I played for seven teams and I I played 14 years and I I would have loved to play in Buffalo for 14 years. Would have been, it would have been pretty cool to say, and I think I could have done that. So, you know, you look back, do I have regrets? I don't have any regrets. I don't, I don't, I never look back at yesterday. You know, I probably shouldn't have done the shots of tequila yesterday, (laughs) but you know, it's part, part of learning. Uh, So I don't have regrets, but certainly things I probably would have done differently now thinking about it and, and going through that book, you're like, maybe I was the ass a little bit, you know, maybe, maybe I was through that all trying to be loyal to someone and taking it out on someone else probably wasn't fair. I think that's good. That's that sounds well said. Barkoff, Braden Point, oh. pretty damn good players. And now through this whole process of you, you know, publishing the book and everything, what have been some of your most memorable moments? Is it, you know, reminiscing the memories? Is it, you know, going out to these signings? What, what's your most memorable moment of the whole process? Yeah, a lot of different, I, I think going through the book, you're like, um, so when you write a book like this, first thing you do is you write down every team in the league and you try to take a story, you try to remember all your stories because there's just so many stories and so many funny things that, that, that go along. Like I'll, just one with, one with Rob Ray. It was when the one piece stick first came out and Rob had his and it, he got one stick. He was the last guy to get a stick. And it just a funny story, but he gets on the bus and he's so proud of the stick and he's got one. And I'm like, we used to take a bus over to Buff State and that's where we used to practice. And we're fully in our uniforms with our shoes on and, and we have our sticks and all that. I'm like, oh, let me see that. And everyone's got their stick and they're like, oh, what's he gonna do? And I'm like, let me see. And I start bending it a little bit. He's like, don't break it. I, don't, I only got one. And I, just, <laughs> for some reason, I was just trying to be an ass. And I looked him straight in the face. This is Rob Wright. Like, this is one of the toughest guys in the National Hockey League. And I just stepped on his stick and I broke it. <laughs> and he looks at me, and obviously in different verbiage. And we start fighting. I'm talking toe to toe at the back of the bus yeah. on our way to practice. Well, he's cut me and he's tough. And I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so I'm laughing at him as I'm cut. And Brad May is trying to get in the middle, but he's like, I don't want to get hit. Like, yeah, Rob's, right. Rob's <laughs> mad. And, and he's like, stop laughing. Like, stop laughing. I go, I can't. And just out of nowhere, Rob just looks at me, and he's got a big melon. Like, that's the biggest head you've ever seen in your yeah, life. Good dome piece. And I, now I'm holding him, and he can't get at me, and he just headbutts me and knocks my six teeth out. Oh, oh goodness. And we're going to practice. Yeah, 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 we're not even at practice and, and, and yet. Lindy <laughs> doesn't even get up. Like Lindy doesn't even get up off, off the seat. You're like, all right, boys, <laughs> big practice today. I'm I'm walking in. My teeth are messy. I got blood dripping everywhere, and that was just oh, one of those stories. God. But when when I when I look back, it's reminiscing at the funny stuff. Um, players that I, I had the absolute pleasure of playing with, and then just remembering some of the some of the stories, like most of it doesn't even involve hockey. It involves like locker room stuff and yeah. dinners and you know like when we we had Brad May one time and and shaved X lax on his on his dessert. Well, the guy was in a coma for two days, shitting his pants. Oh. 
<laughs> like he almost got sent to the miners because we shaved the bar of X lax on on his food. Like it's it's stuff that that's the stuff you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. As much as the on ice is a part of the yeah. whole career, it's, yeah, it's, it's everything off the. It ice. was easy. He just loves chocolate pie so much that he, he was not leaving any of that. He was just scooping it up, scooping just it up. Just getting a little shave on there, like your Gordon Ramsay or something. Oh just yeah, little, yeah. We we little, well, little when I say we sprinkled, we sprinkled the whole bar. Yeah. Like we, it was a bar. Like, hey, this guy was dehydrated for about a month. Jeez. All right, who do we got here? Dante Fabro from BC. Yeah. Mackenzie Weger, he is no longer there. He's in Calgary. That's right. Nick Schmaltz. Nice. All right, one more. Yeah, we'll have you do the last pack there, and then I got one last one. And then we'll kind of close things out, but we want to thank you guys for joining us. Hopefully you've been enjoying this discussion as much as we have so far. We don't need to cut this at noon. Matt's uh, added about something. A good fall. So we have this <laughs> we have this thing within the live lounge in the studio. Okay. It's a, uh, awesome studio. It, it, I, I know I've already set up. This is thank you. pretty no, damn really cool it. setup, guys. <laughs> this, is, this is impressive. Built this thing ourselves. Did to you? be honest with you, I swear. Yeah, we have this thing. Uh, well, I'm not going to build it myself. I'll have no, to buy we'll it. Have, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll do it for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fire away. What the, chat, the chat's referring to this thing that we Patrick have Kane, called a... Patrick uh, Kane, come home, baby. It's a swear jar. <laughs> a swear jar. Yeah. Oh. So All we, right, I'll leave five bucks. Oh, don't, yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Timo Meyer. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out. Thanks, guys. Oh, the chat The chat is... And you know what? I'll add to it now. The chat is on our ass about the swear jar. Hey, man, listen. Chat's so. great. Tra <laughs> chat are great people. Great community that yeah. we built here at yeah. David Adams. They're ruthless, though. They'll let, right. they'll let you know. Okay. They're unfiltered fire, sometimes. Fire away. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me open up the last pack here. Uh, how do we want to have the folks at home try to win the contest? Uh, that I, we I remember did that. Yes. Ask Barnaby if, uh, where is it now? The 2000 Whistler NHL PA trip. What a blast. It was fun. Who is that? Who is that? That was a great, great time. Yeah. I remember walking into the meeting, and I was sent out. We played rock, paper, scissors, because the meeting got so boring at one point. And I, I walked back in with like 14 beers in my hands and my pockets, and it was just jingling as, uh, as uh, Bob Goodenow, the, the president, was, was talking. Uh, further to that, we, we had that lockout in 04, and I remember calling when I got Peck over at my house and a bunch of the guys, and we're playing poker, and it was during the lockout, and I remember like $2 billion, like we're risking, and I, I, we're all hammered at my house, and I... I pull up the phone and I call our, our union president. I'm like, we're not going to win this fight. Like, every league has a salary cap. We need a salary cap. Like, we're all on board. Yeah. Like, we're losing $2 billion collectively. We need a salary cap. I said, can you tell me at the end of it that we're not going to have a salary cap? If so, if you can unequivocally tell me that, I'm on board. He says, well, I can't tell you that. I go... Well, I got pocket twos right now, and I think Peck says pocket aces. Yep. I'm not betting $2 billion on it. And I go, you're, you're going against really rich owners with pocket twos. We, we lost that lockout. Yeah. Yeah. That's Thanks tough. for, cost me $2 million, ass. <laughs> Zeke says he used to work for the NHLPA. That's okay. the person. Interesting. All right. Yes. It was a good time. Whistler's an awesome place. All right. Great, well, great time. Hey, thank you so much for Cheers. the stories and that. Really appreciate you. you coming on. Nice meeting you guys. Real quick. How are the folks at home going to win the contents that we just ripped here? What do you think they should do? Uh, favorite <laughs> favorite story that Barnaby just told on the on the yeah. show. So your favorite moment from this episode. I think that's a great via one, Matthew Barnaby. So there you go. Make sure you're going off in the Twitch chat right now, or when we upload the video to YouTube, make sure you comment on YouTube. What was your favorite moment for this episode, and why? All right. So that's going to do it for us today. That's going to wrap it up. One more thank you. Uh, thank you. Also, how can the folks at home get the book? My wife says it all the time. Jeffrey Bezos has absolutely everything. Uh, Amazon. You can go to Amazon. Uh, you can actually email. If you want a signed copy, you have to either be at a, at a signing like I'm doing at David Adams uh, tonight or actually today. Um, or you can just... Email me at uh, MatthewBarnaby3636 at gmail.com, and I can personalize it to you that way. But you can go to Amazon. You can go to Barnes & Noble. In Canada, you can go to Indigo. Um, but Amazon has it if uh, you don't want it signed. 
All right. And anything else you want to plug for the folks at home? Any Anything you're working on or any of the social media? Uh, listen, you follow me on Twitter if you want, Matt uh, Barnaby3636. Uh, listen to my podcast. Again, always unfiltered. Um, unfiltered with Matthew Barnaby. And thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I'd love to yeah, come on thank, again. Thank you. For All right. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm All right, jealous. Next thing you know, on Friday, we're just going to be in chairs. Yes. All yes. right. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for us. We do one more thing on the show. We always crinkle up the paper, and we try to hit that middle camera. You want to help us? Absolutely. All right, take that. Bye. Guys, make sure you're following us, DA Car World, across all the social media platforms, at DA underscore the chase. Make sure you're hanging out on twitch.tv slash DA Car World. After this, we'll have group breaks and everything going on in the lounge. Once again, Matthew Barnaby, give it up for him. And remember, guys, it's all, all about, about the, the chase. chase. Oh, I was you guys off. stink. Yeah. He hit it. Nailed it. <laughs> Drilled it. All right, top <laughs> guys, out. We'll see you next time.